Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of Gorecom, in which we speak to small cap executives about what's going on with their companies, what's going on in the space, and actually that's what we're here more to talk about. And guess who's on the screen? No introduction. Sheldon Nimitosh, founder, chairman, 3D Capital, trades on the CSC under IDK, and for our friends of the U.S., IDKFF. For those who are new to the story, and we know that there are constant new people coming in because Sheldon's company is making more and more investments. Uh, the company essentially uh, provides investors with significant explo- exposure of ground floor opportunities in small cap stocks at the very, very early stages and even private disruptive technologies. Uh, and all of these would, ne- would be impossible for nearly 99% of investors to participate. Uh, so there's quite simply no other investment vehicle like it in the Canadian small cap space. When you invest with Sheldon, you get to invest in things that you otherwise wouldn't wouldn't be able to invest in. You look at you're looking great. You got great color. You got a lot of colors in the background there. You you did it. You made a smart move. Well, I had to get my uh, vaccines, and uh, you know, uh, I I lost some confidence in the Canadian um, government ability to deliver things on time. So we had an opportunity, and uh, yeah, we've got both our shots now. So feeling good about that. Well, let's talk about let's talk about opportunities that you haven't missed out on. Uh, you guys have been more active than ever at 3D Capital uh, with investments that you're making. It just seems to be accelerating. Uh, you got the latest ones. I'm just reading off a couple. ePlay uh, to expand their esports universe, uh, acquiring controlling interest of uh, Amped Ventures along with the joint actor, Windfall Geotech. Um, what are, what's the reason for the acceleration, especially at a time when some small cap investors feel like it's a risk off environment, uh, and they're not as enthusiastic. Is this a class example of you knowing when to take advantage of the market? Well, you know, we don't invest to trade. So if there's a time to invest, it's when it is risk off, because that's an opportunity that deals are not rushed you can do your due diligence the pricing tends to be good not inflated if it's a public company already by the froth going on in the market but i I think i've said this before there's a breadth and depth of new opportunities that i i've never seen in my lifetime agreed and so no we've broken up our areas into disruptive tech and then junior resources and then even the best of breed where junior resources can bridge into tech, you know, like windfall geotech. Um, and then there's the whole area of, of esports, which, you know, our first investment was enthusiast gaming. And, you know, it's struggled for a while, but now it's it's mainstream. Um, as you know, we invested in, in uh, uh, GMBL, which is Esports International, a company out of nowhere that's going to have 100 million in sales in fiscal 22. Uh, but it spawned a huge number of emerging new ideas in the esports space. And, and ePlay, with a partnership with Howie Mandel, fits into the uh, AMP is a technology that uh, supports the elimination of latency, which in esports is a real problem because of the delay sure. through, di- through digital uh, communications. So, you know, these aren't you know, necessarily areas that we go, well, can we find this type of company? They, 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 they're popping up all over the place. And just uh, in addition, the environmental space and, and uh, you know, battery recycling. And, um, you know, w- we've been extremely active. It's been a very active uh, month of April coming to a close. Um, we are looking for more resource opportunities. We were strongly positive about that sector. I've mentioned blockchain. There's so many blockchain opportunities, NFTs. Uh, So um, it is really, uh, the ideas are not stopping, even though, you know, some of the performance of the stocks may have quietened down because as you know, these things all go in cycles and they trade. Everybody comes in the door at the same time and tries to get out the door. And we kind of approach our business more as 
a longer run um, enterprise and trying to build these companies and, um, you know, exit with very high valuations or takeovers and buy at very low valuations. What's the teachable moment here now? Uh, Because I feel like this is a big teachable moment and that people need to hear from you, investors need to hear from you. Everyone can be a rock star when prices are rising and the market is performing great. But what's the teachable moment here in how to truly generate wealth from the small caps? Because it's definitely not flipping in and out, right, Sheldon? So what's the teachable moment? Because we just came off the hottest Q1 we've seen in you know four or five years. And now you know, we've just cooled off a bit in, in Q2 here, latter half of Q1. What's your message to, to investors in the small cap space and disruptive tech out there? Well, I think you have to look at the big picture and go, is it intact? Uh, what are the risks out there? And the risks are basically inflation. So how do you use that? And inflation is not uh, something, that, sorry, Paul coming, uh, is, is not some, it's the beginning of an inflation cycle. And what do you invest in, in that cycle? And so disregard the uh, individual, let me turn that off. Let me, uh, d- you know, disregard you know, the, the noise of the moment, um, you know, you're looking at earnings in the U S and, and they're coming out quite buoyant. Uh, so we have a strong market. You have huge amount of government spending. So one should look at how can they position themselves for the next five years? Cause I believe you can make that decision. And, uh, if you, if you, do your work and you believe in inflation, then what do you invest in inflation? And, you know, certainly junior resources is a pretty good place. So you want to invest when the volumes are dead, when they've dried up as an, as a retail investor, uh, because that is, that's when you know that probably the downside is limited. Um, it's very easy to want to invest in very active buoyant stocks because we all feel good about it. And then often they move up after we buy them. But, you know, typically in those in that time period, uh, they're overvalued. And at the end of the day, they're probably going to be below what you pay for them unless you have a long, long time horizon. And And that's the key, right? The wealth is made. All the big exits you've had, you've had billion dollar plus exits. You've had five hundred million dollar exits. I think what's so important is people realize that those exits didn't take place in six months. You didn't buy a company in January and get a massive exit. You you had to be patient, Sheldon. What do you think? Minimum for a great company to give me to be to be given the time necessary to mature and really hit its growth is a minimum two years. But I think it's more like three to four ish years. Yeah. But if you're smart enough and patient enough. You make a mountain of money if, as long as you don't get thrown off the track by trading activity. Yeah, I mean, there's a, it's you know, the use it's over word use, but you got to have discipline. Um, and it's easy to get caught up in the emotions of, wow, this is going. I'm going to chase that. Look, if I had invested in that, I'll I'll trade. I'll invest in that. I'll trade in that. Then I'll come back to this thing that is going to take longer. But the thing is, is that you really don't know when you know the fat lady's going to sing the game's going to start the you know an exit's going to show up out of left field the number of new ideas and projects is at a blistering rate right now that if you are connected to deal flow you you don't have enough money to invest in all the deals so you have to be selective and then you you know have to understand enough that you know, your choices um, are going to require you to wait it out, you know, unless there's something that changes and there's many things that can change. Some things may get shaken up in the macro market, you know, we might find the yield curves rising and, you know, that's going to put a damper on things. So if you buy right, and I've always said the money's made in the buying, uh, then you'll find that you'll govern yourself appropriately and stay the right time. And then guess what? If the markets go nuts, take your capital off the table. Use that to develop a position in another company. And you'll find you'll sleep a lot better that way.
Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Let's talk about um, a couple of companies. Look, we know a couple of companies have been near and dear to your heart. We've spoken about the past. We've spoken about uh, Loop Insights. We've spoken about Peak FinTech Group. The big news this week came out of Loop Insights. Actually, correction, I'll say the news came out. You tell us how big you think it is. Uh, and the headline for those people that don't know, Nielsen IQ and Loop Insights announced strategic alliance to transform the retail sector, All right? You've, you know what's what out there, Sheldon. When you read this press release, what's your insight, pardon the pun, on how big this is to Loop today going forward? And how's, how does that impact your decision on what you're going to do with Loop inside the IDK portfolio? Well, first thing is, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a company of the size of brand uh, of a company Nielsen's make a statement like that. You know, to use the word transform is, I mean, those are dangerous words because, um, you know, they're, you know, they've got very sophisticated constituency and when people see that, they're going to go, well, wait a second. Like, yeah. what is that on some company that has no sales? So uh, that is a headline catcher that, I mean, blew me away. Now, understanding Loops, Loop Insights technology, it's, you know, phobie device and trying to, let's call it, digitize the bricks and mortar space in real time. The technology was always what interested us. And they have attracted, obviously, some great channel partners um, and some great maybe selling partners. But this is the first time we're seeing a partner that on its own can make Loop an engine that married into the you know, basically the Nielsen IQ technology, which they have a lot of technology, they've been around a long time, but they were missing something. And for them to sort of admit that they have found a technology, which to me sounds like an engine for them to obtain real time data, right. relevant data, uh, metrics and information that would have great utility to its customers, which, as you know, are across the globe. I mean, uh, this is transformative. Um, it's, it's beyond what an investor could ask for, for a company this early in its cycle. I mean, it would it be different. Early. It would be different to me. I know they've announced, for example, Sobeys, uh, but it was a trial and they've announced other trials. It'd be different if three or four major chains announced rollouts and then Nielsen runs after them. No, we have not seen that. So, uh, you know, it's obviously that Nielsen has done his due diligence. Um, so they know what the value proposition, proposition is here. And it sounds like it marries with them. And by the way, I've sort of, my first thought is that maybe Nielsen this is a you know a prima donna statement. Niels needs almost loop more than new loop needs Nielsen, in the sense that Nielsen's a dinosaur. It trades at just you know it doesn't even trade at a multiple to sales. You know, so all growth technology companies they trade at multiple to sales. So it's a laggard. It's it's a dinosaur in, in at risk of losing its franchise because of the speed upon which technology is changing. But it sounds to me that this, that loop it was a diamond in the rough that, you know, provides some form of engine for them to do through AI and its whole loop system, something that they could not do on their own. And so the value to me is it's priceless and um, you know, when I look at the market response and I bought shares after that and I'm going, wow, this, th you know, this is, this is not just a channel reseller. This is a partnership, a strategic partnership. 
So, uh, which means that they're going to be integrated and aligned. And I don't even know who Nielsen's clients are, but they got to be well, the who's big, who. the biggest retailers, and, the biggest consumer package companies in the world. Yeah, and without question, before they got to this point, they they have had to do done their own betas. Oh. They had to do it with different customers, and the order of magnitude of the of the response in terms of the value proposition to all these um, chains, I'll call them chains or big companies or brands, must have been prophetic. And it must have been such a basis that Nielsen had to do a deal, which you don't find these deals, these deals sometimes take years to, put, to, do, to happen. I've heard from so many companies, oh, we're, we're gonna partner with a big guy or this and that. and it just often either doesn't happen at all, or it's not, or it's a lukewarm kind of partnership. Uh, uh, if Nielsen can go out with their with Loop and 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 demonstrate, and all this technology, from my understanding, is you can do it all remotely. Uh, it's not, you know, you're not, you know, wiring up things in the way you used to. So the the entry time. Uh, the implementation time, um, I think, could probably be quite quick. And if results are in real time, then the results are quick. You know, this is this sounds to me like it could gain traction quickly. Um, I'm glad you brought up something you said at the beginning of that. The words you actually said that. Nielsen wouldn't use the term transform retail sector because it's one thing for George at Agoracom say, we're going to transform small cap marketing communications. Okay. He's the proprietor. He's the owner. He's got some good ideas, whatever that means. But Nielsen IQ has, as you said, the world watching. They're not allowed, you know, and they're not going to allow themselves to use transform the retail sector. And they actually use the term game changer uh, in the interview as well. So reading between the lines, what do you think this means for Loop as an, inv and I'm not asking for a share price or projection or like that, but assuming this relationship goes decently well, not the penultimate perfect relationship and not a terrible, it just goes really well. You know, in your mind as a holding your portfolio, how long of a runway do you now give Loop to just let it grow and achieve, you know, some optimal performance here? So, you know, this is like in, in poker, you call it paying to see the hall card. And, you know, I'm glad, you know, I, like we bought in our shares early. We could have walked away, taken it off the table because I didn't know if this was ever going to happen, right? But staying with it and believing, you know, and also, I mean, obviously the co the company has delivered partnerships, um, yeah, and it's us, that, NTP data. They, they, yeah, they, and it shows that it can do the contact tracing side and so forth. But also, I know that all those relationships take time because. All these big companies, everybody's worried is, you know, who's going to lose their job. But the reason why I say that, you know, we've all now paid to see the whole card. I like that. Is that um, it's Nielsen knows the value of what this can do. And it's in the data business. It's not some company doing one thing over here and going, I'm going to, you know, set up a new business over here and we're going to take over from any else's. So it's a, it's like a hand in glove. They just go to where they already add uh, already are and add and integrate the loop insights technology into their own data analytics, which they have. So like they bring something to the table too here. This is, sure. but but it this just sort of reminds me a bit of like Intel inside without the power of that 64k chip what it used to be or that you know they couldn't do what they wanted to do plus the analytics the AI that now brands 
you know, uh, some that uh, are scattered brands or some that don't have the ability to invest in the infrastructure because it costs a great deal of money can have the sponsorship of a company like Nielsen that they have the confidence in that's bringing a ready-made additive solution that makes their business way more valuable, way more productive, probably attracts more ad revenue or whatever it is, uh, the many metrics, data, you know, data is, everything's about data today. Everybody needs data, wants data. So the whole card has, we know what's in the whole card. So now is absolutely risk reward, the best time in the company's history, if you're a bit risk averse to enter and go, I'm going to let Nielsen drive this bus now because Loop doesn't have to bring on a sales force. It doesn't have to make 5 million presentations of the value it. It's going to a company that already has all the customers that you need. You don't need to go out on your own and maybe try to find a non-Nielsen customer. What's the point? Now, I'm sure they will because of TELUS and I believe that relationship. Um, and I don't know where Sobeys came from, but uh, I've got to believe that there's a positive buzz here that this technology does special things. Uh, I've always felt it has ever since you've introduced it and sort of we had our call with Rob and we're going, wow, this is something. And then obviously little companies, you never have confidence in, especially Canadian companies in tech until you get that partnership to endorse it, to make it real, because they'll do the due diligence that none of us is ever capable upon doing. Yeah, that's exactly like, it, because we don't really know. We have a good idea that Loop's got great technology. We see some stuff, but at the end of the day, it's tell us that's telling us because it's in the IoT marketplace. It's NTT yeah. data because a monster company like that just doesn't create a partnership for- And for the head data. of NTT. He's, uh, you know, CTO comes and joins. Like, what's that all about, right? Um, so, so, uh, so they, do people, you think the market gets, You, I know what my answer is, but I can't say it. Do you think the market gets the magnitude of loop right now? No, 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 not at all. I think that they don't have the audience um, to, to really... Um, I'd say that this company is is unknown um, in America. You know, uh, listen, it does not have an insignificant market cap. So a lot of people who own it are probably, in my view, their criticism would be, oh, I would have rather seen a rollout of Sobeys and a number attached to how much money they're going to get in royalties or SaaS fees per year, license fees. That is the aspect of, uh, you know, when we talk about peak FinTech, well, you know, they may do $100 million in sales this year and people see it. And they've already reported enough that people know that there's a real underpinning of commerciability there. We have not yet seen that with Loop. I've encouraged management to try to do some guidance, at least to give, I have no idea what this company as uh, sales are going to be, I don't really care about earnings, but you know, all these deals that have been done, how are, you know, how does that translate into the fundamentals of, of growth, which is, which is sales really. And then obviously uh, a profit. So I think that a lot of people believe in, in, and like the technology, but they, the last quarter came out and there was no real sales. And I think it's sort of a bit of a show me, but here you come with 800 pound gorilla and those people are going, well, okay. It's not, they're not, those are not the people that are going to move the shares higher because they're already invested and they don't understand how this is going to lead to sales until it does. So you have that segment of the population that's, that's, that's paying attention is holding its shares but to get a new wave of investor, institutional investors primarily, I believe, uh, and I've sent this out to some firms to have a look at now, 
that I believe this is an eye opener. And anybody who does the eye opening and then starts to do their own due diligence. And now with Nielsen doing this spin-off tech, you know, whole restructuring of its technology, it's becoming a more exciting company. It's going to have more eyeballs. Someone is going to pick up on this press release and go, oh, wait a second, what is what is really this loop? They'll look at all the press releases and they'll go, wow, you know what? It's not easy just to get on an Oracle platform or use the word Amazon in, in your, you know, in your in your vocabulary. Uh, but there will be obviously a customer that comes out of this. Um, but you know, this is a company that's transition transitioning from a technology looking for the right market from the right technology to a commercialized venture, but they just skipped about 20 floors in that growth. And so now there's gonna be a spark. And, and, and I think it's gonna happen in the coming days or weeks where the incremental investor, an institution out of the US is gonna go, oh my God, and I'll tell you, a firm I've been dealing with in the U.S. is called H.C. Wainwright, and yep. it's a mid, it's a mid-tier firm, and they are coming to Canada and picking off these junior uh, blockchain. They're in blockchain focused mostly, junior tech companies that are extremely low valued compared to their U.S. counterparts. And not that, and I'm saying this is and for it's them. It's about time. It's about time. I mean the. Canada is a new Silicon Valley in my book. This yeah, is where you there's, find there's, the Apple and Google's in their garage. Not that they're going to become Google, but we don't need them to be. This is where you just pick up these great technology companies almost in the garage at cheap valuations with great securities regulations, liquidity and financing around them. You find the right one. It's not very hard to make a really big return on these. Like a Shopify. And, <laughs> you know, Bam. and so you do you Shopify? I got to believe Shopify would be interested in somehow getting in the mix here, right? So people may not listen to Rob, you know, <laughs> trying to stand up from the tallest building, and he's great, but they're going to look at Nielsen and, you know, they're going to go, whoa, those, those words and, and that marriage what are the benefits and where can we fit in? And boy, maybe I should own a little piece of this company. And I'm not saying that those companies are the ones, but the, the lot of institutions that are gonna connect yeah. the dots, it's all there in the public domain. Uh, being in Canada is a bit more challenging because of the, uh, the exposure being more limited to, I think, the right types of what I'll call whales that I believe are should and will enter here. So from my standpoint, I sort of been looking at the, my portfolio and going, well, you know, maybe there's some things that I can sell that don't have the same upside that I think Matrix has, or or how do how can I expand on my position, uh, position, not subtract, even though you know we we have a very low cost here. But you know, this could be a once in a lifetime opportunity to, to be part of a Shopify type of thing at, wow. and, and at, at an early valuation. And you know, when you look at these companies, you know, a lot of people entered Shopify on private placements at two and $3 billion, you know what I mean? Um, you know, we're talking about a company at $150 million or 100, 200 million, but in technology, that's nothing. And especially with the model, that I believe Rob is going after, which involves some packaging of license fees, um, you know, and some type of percentages and and so forth. Every deal, I'm sure, will be will be different. So, uh, you know, I could easily start to get some numbers together and and project and go if they got one client that did one rollout, man, this company it's gone. It's just it's gone because. You know, this is very black and white and, you know, there's either valuable data and information or there's nothing. I mean, or there's or there's not enough. But for a company like Nielsen's to 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 almost trans um, not transform, they use that word, but transition in a partnership 
with a little company that is going to be a game changer. I mean, uh, and you add it already up to all the data points you have that Loop has disclosed previously. Um, when I when I read that, I go, wow, this thing is it's going to go really go. And, uh, you know, I believe that um, there's a lot of shorts playing around with it, but still, we never got the volume. It's going to have to trade 10 million shares in a day. Uh, is this why Sheldon it needs to go? And is this why you think now they announced back in Q4 that NASDAQ? they're going to uplist to the NASDAQ? Do you think they're, do you think it's a case of they knew all the discussions they were having? They knew these discussions yeah. would take time to come to fruition, but they might as well at least let the world know that they're going to get the ball rolling. And do you think it's at the point now where, you know, qualifications aside, it's ready to get to that, to, to go to that next level where they've got to be ready to list on the NASDAQ, let's say by the end of the year or something, because only there yeah. they're going to get the true monster liquidity of people, of investors who understand NTT, TELUS, uh, and, yeah. uh, and yeah. uh, Nielsen IQ. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I made an introduction, uh, Rob doesn't even know it, to a firm in the U.S. to look at this press release, a firm I know, and are very good at, not H.C. Rainwright, but they're a good mid-tier U.S. firm that would be a, a perfect sponsor, because you need a sponsor, and probably do a capital raise and go through all that. Um, but uh, this is... This has got to get the attention of some of the right people. I, you know, I was going to ask Rob, and I haven't spoken to him since he put out the news, other than giving him a thumbs up. That wow, this is this is beyond anything I I would have thought. Is how did Nielsen's find out about you? I mean, you know, I can understand a lot of. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I haven't had a chance to ask that question myself. That is, that would be a really valuable question. You know, so if Nielsen's found them, well, who else is watching? You know, uh, you know that they've done the deals with the oracles and in the Amazon ACS or Amazon cloud service organization, and you know, Telus is a big name, um, and it's not easy to get through the cycle of due diligence of these of these big guys. And he's done it, you know, four or five times now. So, um, and then there's all these other deals that they've announced in the UK and elsewhere. And uh, so that's where I've, I've sort of, you know, in the short run, you know, it, 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 if, if, it's, if there is concrete guidance to give, it would be a message for certain investors. But I think this Nielsen overshadows it all. Um, but I guess there's always the risk that it doesn't turn out to what you think it's going to turn out. That's the devil's advocate, right? That's yeah, the sure. Market. There's no, it's no guarantee, but right. man, it, this, it's a great, it's a great ticket to have stamped. And, that, this, yeah. and, and my prediction is once the shares break through a resistance point here, because I believe that the selling pressure just generally, there's been a lot of selling in it since it's had its major move then i think it's the type of thing that could start to get a life of its own and no one will know who's buying it but it will be smart money and they're going to go this is a cheap company now very cheap um so uh, uh, you know in conclusion you know we just paid to see the whole card and often once you see the whole card it's too late to get a fair price. It's normally the stock gaps two or three dollars, and then most people go, "Ah, it's out of my price range." Right? Then it needs the bigger and bigger investor. But here we are sitting, not at a fifty-two week high, fifty uh, percent of that. That makes it to me a damn good risk return bet. But this is one that I would always keep a position to play out for the long run because it, it's a it's the type of company that if it succeeds with nielsen nielsen or somebody like that will make a run at buying this company 
They will have to, because they'll have other applications uh, in their world on top of what Nielsen's may have, or it could be Nielsen's itself. I don't know. And this is the great thing about um, having someone like that you is because you understand these kind of implications. You can see the dominoes four and five steps down the road. Yeah, yeah. No, I see it all play out and I'm going, wow, this is, uh, you know, I kind of felt that it was going to get there just because I believed in the technology. Um, I think that uh, the smokescreen here has been this whole contact tracing where people have kind of don't want to hear a story about managing COVID and, and all that sort of stuff. And there's been talk that maybe governments would take it on and everything's so slow. <clears throat> but the core of the business is the deal they did with Nielsen's. That was the core upon what interested me. Yet, it's great that they can go down to Las Vegas and put on events and uh, you know have 100% success. It shows further validation of the application of this technology. But the real big money is in you know the digi digitization of the bricks and mortar world. And now you've got Nielsen that desperately needs to get out of the dinosaur world that they were in, not dinosaur world, where they were as a company compared to where all these new technologies are going um, and figure out a way to get more value added to its customer base. And they selected this company and they, if there was somebody else who could have done it better they would have been doing a deal with somebody else. They're not, they're not doing loop of favor. That's for sure. Right. I mean, they selected them. No. That's the best of breed that they found on the planet. You have to assume. And, uh, and no one's better at assessing who are the players than Nielsen IQ. So if they selected loop, you've got to figure they're the king of the hill. Yeah. And if it's good for Nielsen, I mean, what does Amazon do when they watch this and, you know, they've got Whole Foods, right? And they've got their own world where, you know, this could have an application to, you know? And what, you know, what do, what do all these other companies, Oracle and, and their whole world and what they're, and, and, and who uses Oracle? And then, you know, uh, and who are Oracle's partners? Um, uh, so Nielsen is coming in you know, not as a technology partner, but as a business partner. And, and so that's where this is extremely, extremely exciting. And I'm gonna ask you one last question, but it almost had to happen this way, right? Because Loop's technology is not built for George's Greek chicken chain with eight chain. I mean, don't wrong they'll take that as a customer. But the technology is so good that they're going to go after the Sobeys of the world. We know that. In order to get the Sobeys of the world, okay, you can get them in your backyard because you're in Canada, but it's almost as if Loop had to become a partner with Nielsen, a business partner, had to become part of the Oracle network. Because otherwise, the, the biggest retailers in the world would always have their doubt if they're just dealing with Loop. Right. So is it almost it had to happen this way because they're ready for prime time. They're ready to go global, yeah. but on their own, they just wouldn't be able to achieve. It's they the need. Old, yeah. It's the old adage. You don't get fired by doing a deal with IBM. So when IBM had mainframe computers and everything, there were other companies, maybe Microsoft and others that popped up and, you know, everybody's saying, no, no, we, we're going to stick. I don't want to lose my job by taking a risk on this junior little company. But, you know, bringing up Sobeys, you know, I, and I've had some experience in the supermarket industry, and I don't know if the numbers have changed since I had some experience, but they do massive volumes. And they're like, bottom line is like 1% after tax, maybe 2%. It's a very low number. The leverage of bringing data to that um, if you increased it by some basis points, has massive uh, ramifications on the profitability of these enterprises. And so, you know, these are industries down here. The big one is Publix. There's Publix at every corner. And, you know, they don't know who you are. They don't know what your patterns are. 
Um, but, you know, moving food around is labor intensive, no matter what, capital intensive, uh, energy intensive. So the data is what's going to allow you to do things more efficiently, uh, look at trends. And the fact that you can do that in real time means that, you know, you can react to trends in, in your own marketplace. And I think that the value proposition there has huge leverage. So this is, this is a breath of fresh air for all these companies that are trying to find out, you know, you can just become so much more profitable by cutting costs. But, you know, in this case, is, you know, you're going to add costs, but I, I think that almost the cost per store would be irrelevant to the overall scheme of things. But if, if through Nielsen's, you can monetize that data, then, you know, you're becoming, you know, uh, I'm not saying another Facebook, but, you know, that's what drove Facebook's value is monetizing data. And look what the size that they are. And who knows what Apple does. And, and, uh, and, and you know, and Amazon has, is more uh, diversified, you know, cloud services and all kinds of verticals. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, you're selling cars, you know, who comes in? Why are they doing it? How could you do it differently? Oh, maybe you can add features. You, I don't even know where, um, you know, the, the full value so It's okay that you don't know because I think that's, that's the problem that, the retailers don't know, which is why they need real-time data analytics, right? That's, that's, that you're making the whole point there that nobody knows and now they will. And if they just add, you know, a couple of 50 basis points, 180 basis points of efficiency to the end game, when you're only making 200 basis points, it's life-changing, right? For those, for those retailers. I think they're going to see trends in the data in real time so quickly that it's not like, okay, we need a board meeting to evaluate all this data we got to make a corporate decision. And by the time you do that, it's antiquated. If you are, are guided, and this is where I think Nielsen's is such a tremendous partner that has all the experience of how to take something there, but they didn't know how to get the data. That's, that's not, they're not, I don't think they've really been known as a high-end technology company, probably more and more low tech, but now they've got an engine that has all this ability that can plug into their sort of already mature analytics to pick it up, spew it out, and probably come up with recommendations or observations that would allow these retailers or brands to move quickly maybe save costs, you know, by being more efficient because of the agility of this technology. And that's where, you know, I kind of thought maybe we're, maybe we're a high end engine, but it's more than an engine, um, you know, obviously because of, of, of the AI. So it sounds, it's, to me, it's, I, I believe it's a, a marriage made in heaven for a company like this. Sheldon, Thanks so much for joining us to talk about this. I mean, we could keep on going, don't be wrong, but uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head. And by the way, I will add something there. I read through Nielsen IQ site, and you know, when they talk about mission statements and what they do, it's, you know, we got this with this data platform and it provides some analytics to help companies with forward thinking decisions, right? There you go. But not real time. Right. right. Up until now, they've been really strong in saying, hey, Procter & Gamble, based on what we're seeing, you should come out with a product in the next six to you know, 12 to 24 months that addresses this market and this price point or whatever the case may be. Forward decisions. It actually says it right on their website to help the biggest companies of the world, the biggest brands of the world make forward decisions. This is real time. And I think that's what Rob was saying yeah. in interview yesterday. Nobody does real time better than better than Loop. So but thanks for, you know, joining us. We've never done this before, but I think this press release was so big for the entire industry. For I agree. 3D Capital's portfolio, 
for loop investors that they, I think the, the market really had to hear your, your take on this. And I really appreciate it, man, especially because it's a Friday afternoon and you're in Miami and you got, you know, you probably got better things to do than talk to George. <laughs> no, no, no. This was a great way to end the week. And my, you know, certainly my kudos to Rob and his team yep. for pulling this off. I know he, he goes for, you know, he has a big dream here. And a lot of times you have CEOs have big dreams and they're always dreams. Uh, but there's, this is very, very tangible, very real. Um, uh, it's a major partnership platform and it will get its recognition. I'm, I would, I'm a betting man and I'd bet on it. Sheldon, you know, we're going to be talking about it again a month from now, three months from now and December 28th or 29th, 30th, before the end of the year, we're going to talk about it again and almost replay this, this video and see where you're at. But I think you're right. Uh, I, th I think you're making oh, the right bet. I think it's a moment, uh, yesterday was a momentous uh, uh, milestone for, for the company. Thanks, Sheldon. Have a great weekend there in, uh, in Miami and can't wait to have you back, buddy. All right. Thank you, George. You have a good one, too. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform to Sheldon Inwatosh. He's chairman of 3D Capital, trades on the CSC under IDK and on the US OTCQB under IDKFF. Now, look, you've heard what he had to say about Loop, so we're going to park that there. If you've loved hearing the analysis and the thought process that Sheldon puts into his investments, he's a very, very early. The company invests very early in, in Loop Insights. And you've heard what he's had to say about where it's going forward. You've also got to consider that as a reason for investing in 3D capital. We can't tell you what to do, but that's the kind of insight that Sheldon and his team at 3D Capital put into all their portfolio companies. And we didn't get a chance to talk about many of them today, but more than just Loop, there are a lot of other winners in there, all right? Peak FinTech Group, uh, Imagine AR, and, and the list goes on and on. The problem for you is most people at home, you don't have the time to do this kind of deep, deep dive due diligence. So keep making your investments, but consider the fact that when you do invest in 3D capital, that means you're getting a piece of all of Sheldon's thoughts, analysis, conclusions, due diligence, and research that you otherwise don't have time to do. Uh, so can't tell you what to do, but make sure you do your due diligence on 3D Capital because you'll be well served going forward, uh, not just this week, not just this month, not just this year, but given the fact that this decade is gonna be the decade for disruptive tech and great resource companies, uh, you wanna have a piece of, you wanna own a piece of whatever Sheldon is buying Hopefully you make that decision. We leave that to you because we can't tell you to do it. Have a great day. See you next time.